In this video, we're going to use a number line to look at how we can put some numbers in order. Well, when we're ordering, we're thinking of whether something's bigger or smaller. The bus is clearly bigger than the car. The car is clearly smaller than the bus. Quantity is a little different. It's not the size, but it's how many in each group. That group has more people than the other group. That group that's circled has less people than the other group. Well, a number line can help us when we're working with numbers. We place numbers on a number line with marks to set them out. And you can see the marks are spaced by 1 on my number line. So if I place 9, I know it's lower than 10. So I might look for 10 and then I can find 9 and put a mark there. 7 is near 9, so I can place my mark there. 3, well that's closer to 1, so that helps me find 3 on the number line. And 12, that's bigger than 9, so let's put it up there. Now you'll notice that the numbers on the left, where the 0 starts, are smaller. And as we go to the right hand side, which is the direction my green arrow is pointing in, the numbers get bigger. So let's say we wanted to list these numbers now from smallest to largest. What we can do is actually look at the first mark to the left of our screen, because those numbers are smaller, and we can see 3 comes first. So that's the smallest number. If we move along to the right hand side, the red cross is 7, our next number, then 9, and then 12. Now of course, that's smallest to largest, so we have to check what we're being asked to find all the time. Let's look at some different numbers now for this example. This time I've got larger numbers, but we use the same process. What you'll notice though is the number line's different. I don't have room to count by 1 all the way up to 150, so as long as each of my dashes or marks represents the same amount of space between numbers, I can actually number it a little differently. So I've got 10, 50, 100 and 150, and each of the ticks or dashes between amount to 10. So let's look at 90. There's a couple of ways you could do this. You could start at 50 and go forward 10, 20, 30, 40, which takes you to 90. So you're counting up by tens. Or you could start at 100 and count back by 10. So 100 less 10 is 90. Neither is right or wrong, but some of them might get you there quicker. And you can see 100 is closer to 90, so counting back from 10 could be quicker if you can do that. 120. Well, we know it's over 100, so we can count by tens after we get to 100. Where are you going to put your mark? Did you start at 100 and count by tens twice? If you did, you'll find that's 120. Now, do you want to have a go at plotting the last two numbers? Where are you going to start for 60? I started at 50, and 60 is 10 more than 50, so I moved along one space. And for 40, it's actually 10 less than 50, so I went backwards. Now, if we need to put these in order from largest to smallest, do you remember which side we start from? Well, largest starts from the end that the finger's pointing, our right hand side. So let's have a look at our numbers. 120 comes first, then 90, then 60, and then 40. That's in order from largest to smallest. 